Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my audio chain, as it were, um, my process that I use for cleaning up and producing audio for my courses. Now I've seen a lot of questions and answers and stuff going on in like Udemy forums and Pluralsight forums, which are two places that I do courses for. And I see a lot of questions about setup, software to use, removing echo, things like that. And I've actually learned a lot in the last year about audio. I'm still not an audio expert. I'll uh, just kind of preface it with that. I'm not an audio expert and I still have a long ways to go. However, I have found some tricks to kind of purify my voice and recording so that they sound a little more professional and a little nicer. And I'm going to share that today. I use a combination of software and um, kind of room effects that I do. And I'll kind of put all that together for you. And mostly what this is going to focus on is the software itself. For software, I use Camtasia for the recording, and then I use a combination of Reaper and Audacity, and then a various different plugins. So I'll show you the plugins, how they work, and where to get them. And we'll basically show my process from start to finish, which I think sounds pretty good at this time. I think I still have a little ways to go, but right now this is where it's at, and I'm kind of locking it down and sharing it with everybody else, and hopefully you can learn something from this. So let's get started. So here's the room that I have set up here. I've got some uh, acoustic foam kind of blocking things out. It's nothing too fancy, but enough to get rid of a lot of the echo. And I'm using the Rode Podcaster microphone. Now here's what I can tell you about rooms. Mine is definitely still a work in progress, but you wanna to try to keep them small because large rooms echo a lot. Mass is good for the walls. If you can double up your sheetrock and things like that, it will keep the sound out of the room. Now you wanna cover smooth surfaces with foam or blankets. Keeping sound out is good, but keeping it from echoing is also very important. Try to keep noisy fans off and keep your computer away from the microphone. I've found the Rode Podcaster to be very good at not picking up a ton of ambient noise. I generally don't do anything to the audio here. I visually look to see that it's at a decent level and I give it a quick listen. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my audio chain. I try to keep it just below half of the total area here for the best sound. Anything too high or too low may not sound right, and hopefully I don't have too many spikes in the recording. And then I export the audio. You'll notice I have three folders here, clean, final, and raw. What I do is I record in Camtasia, and then I take that raw audio and export it out into the raw folder. Then I open it up in Reaper and I do some of the cleanup things and I export it into the clean folder. After that I open it up in Audacity and I do some of the final touches and then I export it into the final folder. This is just a way to kind of organize things. When you're building a big course or a bunch of different smaller recordings, it's nice to have them organized like this. Okay, now I have Reaper opened up and what I like to do is record about 10 or 15 seconds of just silence. That's what you're looking at here. The reason for doing that is just setting a baseline for the noise to try to get the ambient noise out of the room, which is the first thing we'll do. As you can see, I've got a line of plugins here. Let's go ahead and make this a little bigger. The first plugin I use is called Reefer. It comes free with Reaper, and it's a great noise removal program. And what I do is I subtract the noise. So I go here, here I click on Reefer and enable it, and then select Automatically Build Noise Profile. And then I'll go ahead and play that blank noise that we have. And what this is doing is it's removing some of that baseline noise that I talked about that's here before I start speaking. And then I go ahead and disable it. And now I click on Regate, and that's another free program that comes with Reaper. And what this is is a noise gate for the lower noise that we were talking about earlier. It seems kind of redundant, but we want to make sure to get it removed from the recording. And so this is another way of doing it. And what we want to do is adjust this until the noise goes away. and then we'll disable that one. Next, I'm using RX D-Click by Isotope. This is part of an Isotope pack that comes together, and I'll show you a link for that. It's definitely worth its money. And what this does is it removes the clicks in the audio. This can be anything from taps on the table, to mouse clicks or mouth clicks, or anything in between. And one of the neat things you can do is you can go to output clicks only, and then you can actually hear what it's removing. It's a little difficult to hear, 
But what you're hearing is the clicks that are being removed from the audio. It's good to adjust this and kind of play around with it. Next, I have the RX Dialog Denoise. This is yet another denoiser, and it comes with that RX plugin pack. What I do is set this to manual and reset it. And then I'll go ahead and play that noise again and click on Learn. This is the 10 second clip that's in the beginning of the recording. And what it does is it builds a good profile of that ambient noise that we were talking about earlier. Next, I have a plugin here called SPL Deverb from Plugin Alliance. And what this does is it deverberates a little bit and it removes some of the echo from your recording. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my audio chain as it. Now what I've found is minus six is a really good setting. If you put it all the way down to zero, of course you're gonna have the reverb that you had to start with. As you start increasing the reverb reduction, it changes the sound drastically. Let's take a listen. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my audio chain, as it were. Um, my process that I use- You see how it sounds kind of muffled here? Producing audio for my course. Minus six is a setting that I like, but you'll have to adjust it based on the room that you're recording from. Next is something called Proximity from TDR Labs. Now this one is kind of a subtle change, but it basically changes your proximity to the microphone or at least it tries to simulate that. And one of the things that I've found is it gives me just a little bit more presence. It's barely noticeable, but it's enough that I like to do it. Like Udemy forums and Pluralsight forums, which are two places that I do courses for, and I see a lot of questions about setup, software to use, removing echo, things like that. And I've actually, it's a pretty good little plugin, and I'm sure that you could use it to tune and adjust more and make your sound better. Next, I use ReEQ. This is a free plugin that comes with Reaper also, and basically what this does is just kind of a low pass. Anything that you see here towards the left end is just lower things that have been cut out. Now this is good for cutting out things like cars driving by, traffic rumble, real low bass stuff that's way outside of your voice range that you don't want in your recording. Next, I have another plugin that comes with Reaper, and this is called Master Limiter. And this is another subtle change, but it kind of brings the presence forward and it makes your voice just a little bit louder. And it's kind of a neat plugin like Udemy forums and Pluralsight forums, which are two places that I do courses for, and I see a lot of questions about setup, software to use, removing echo, things like that. And I've It's very subtle, but it definitely brings your voice a little bit louder and kind of brings it up to that level. So now that I've got all of these, I'll enable them all and I'll render my file. Okay, now I have Audacity open and I've got that clean file imported. And the first thing I do here is use Acon Digital Deverberate. This is one of the greatest programs I know for removing room noise. Now, if you make adjustments to these settings, you can definitely remove too much. So if you remove a lot of echo, your voice will sound muffled and kind of held down and even gargly at some point. So you definitely want to find the right reverb level. In the room I'm using, I don't have a ton of reverb, so I can really get away with having it low here. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here, and today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my audio chain, as it were, um, my process that I use. You definitely just wanna to listen to it and kind of fine tune it and get a place that sounds right for you. Next, I like to add a little bit of bass. So I use a built-in effect that comes with Audacity here. And basically, this is a profile that I've kind of made just through trial and error. Yours may be different, but what this does is it just kind of boosts those lowers up a little bit. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here, and today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my audio chain. Now you have to be careful with that, because if you make it too boomy, then definitely your P's and B's and things like that will definitely come through stronger, and if you bump your table, things like that, they really come through when you boost the bass, so you gotta be careful with that. Next, I have the plugin Nectar Elements from Isotope, and basically what this does is there's a bunch of different settings in here. It does a lot of drastic changes, to your voice and it definitely helps for things like voiceover and podcasting, things like that. So what I'm using here is the Nectar Dialog and I've got the settings kind of where I like them and you could definitely hear the difference between these two. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here and today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my audio chain as it were, um, my process that I use for cleaning up and producing audio for my courses. Now I've seen a lot of questions and answers and stuff going on in like Udemy forums and Pluralsight forums, which are two places that I Definitely a significant difference there. And the next effect I use here is another built-in one with Audacity. This one is called the Dyson Compressor. Now I like to set this one really light. I don't like a ton of compression, but I do like the sound that this compressor makes. So basically what I do is set it to a compression ratio of 0.2.
And this seems to be pretty good for me. You can set it higher if you'd like, but I generally don't like a whole ton of compression, um, basically because it makes it kind of sound like you're on the radio and there's this wall of sound. But a lot of people like high compression, so basically it's a personal preference thing. Now, as you can see, I'm definitely hitting the reds, as they say, um, as we play this here. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my audio chain. And what I like to do is I like to normalize it a little bit here. So we'll use another built-in effect from Audacity. Generally, I like to set it to a maximum of a minus six. That works well for me. Your results may vary, but generally what this does, as you can see, is it kind of normalizes it and it brings everything down. This basically takes it to right where I like it to pull it back into Camtasia. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my audio chain, as it were. So now this is ready to export. And now I'm back in Camtasia and I've imported that intro final. And I'll go ahead and disable that raw recording. And what I like to do here is I'll go back into audio and here under noise removal, I like to remove clipping. And what that does is it just takes the edge off the recording a little bit. I'll let you listen. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my audio chain as it were. Um, my process that I use for cleaning up it's very subtle, but I definitely like the sound when that clipping is removed down a little bit. Next, I like to enable volume leveling. Now this is compression again, and what I do is I generally set it to pretty low. And then I go ahead and bring the volume back up so it's close to that 100% mark. And this is what the final product will sound like. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here, and today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my audio chain, as it were. And as you can see by this waveform, it definitely is compressed. It's probably compressed a little bit more than I generally do, and I'm not sure why that is. But let's go ahead and up the compression a little bit just to see what it sounds like. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my audio chain, as it were, um, my process that I use for cleaning up and producing. And now let's try high compression. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my audio chain, as it were, um, my process that I use for cleaning up and producing audio for my courses. Now, like I said, this is all personal preference. Personally, I, I think this sounds good. However, it's very loud. It's very in your face. It's kind of a wall. And for me, it's a little bit tiring to listen to. And since I generally do long, drawn out courses with long recordings, I don't want the person to feel tired or kind of worn out. I want them to really focus on the content less than the audio. That's my personal philosophy as far as it goes for audio, is I want it to be so good that nobody notices it. As in, I don't want it to be spectacular fancy, blaring to where someone just says, wow, this audio is great. And they just kind of listen to it. I just want them to not even think about it, not even be there. And I want them to focus on programming or systems administration or whatever it is I'm teaching. So I'll set this back to low. Hi, Jeremy Morgan here. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my audio chain. Now there's a couple other things I like to do also, and I won't make you sit through this during the whole video, but I basically like to take breaths out and pauses of silences. So I'll show you how we do that. Right here, we have a nice breath. So I'll just select that whole thing, bring it down. I generally don't like to go all the way to the bottom. Like right here, I'm sitting at 10%. And the reason for that is you can actually audibly hear when it goes perfectly silent. So I like to keep just a little bit there, as it were. Um, my process, and like that, it's smooth. It's not a rough transition. And it's one of those things, like I said, that people won't even notice. So that's basically one of the things I will do is I'll go through this final recording, take out all those bits of silence, and then it's ready to go. This is my recording process, and it doesn't necessarily have to be replicated exactly. In fact, I would recommend that you don't. However, what you want to do is take each of the plugins, each of the different steps, and kind of adjust them and modify them for your voice to make it sound exactly how you want to sound. So I hope this has helped give you a little bit of inspiration and a little bit of ideas for cleaning up your audio. Here are the links to all of the software plugins that I mentioned earlier. You can use one or all of them. Um, it's really personal preference, but make sure and give these guys a visit and throw them a little bit of money if you can, because they're making great products and it's a great thing that you wanna keep going. If you like my channel, go ahead and subscribe. I do a few audio things here and there, but I'm definitely gonna do more of them in the future. So if this is something that interests you, I kinda wanna help out my fellow Udemy and Pluralsight instructors, um, go ahead and subscribe to the video. Thanks.